Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my channel. So we are on the last prompt for Susanna's vintage sewing techniques. Now, Susanna's channel, if you don't know, is um, Vintage Blend Studio. Uh, all the links to everything is below. So what I've been doing is following along with her um, prompts. She's doing a completely different color scheme to me and she's following the little pattern that she had available with the instructions and some prompts and just some bits and pieces to sort of get us going. Now, I have put more of a vintagey, grungy feel over my work, so I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and I have been forced hand behind my back, thinking mentally hand behind my back, that I just don't think I'd ever do that style like English paper piecing, but I've just fallen in love with it again. Cross-stitch, like oh, I thought I'd never go back to cross-stitch because I'd cross-stitched the death out of everything, but I did those little birds. Like I just, I am amazed. And this, cut work, admittedly it's a pretty rough version of cut work and there's lots of errors and it's not technically correct and if I went and did a class I'd probably go oh my goodness how embarrassing but I don't care because slow stitch is all about having a go and working into your pieces different techniques that we all grew up with and there are no rules so to have a beautiful piece of cut work here and then my piece I just love it and Susanna's pattern was the little piece in the center and she gave me the confidence to have a play. So I think just myself, having come forward in my skill level, I'm sure you're seeing it, well, I hope you're seeing it. You're watching my videos and you're thinking, gee, that girl is starting to really develop and tune her skills. This little piece here is a classic. I was skirting around ribbon embroidery. I was fearful of it. The ribbons are expensive. Don't want to waste them. Um, don't know the techniques. I have the books, been collecting the books for years. I look at the books and go, oh, no, 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 and put the books away. This was a piece that already had some ribbons on it. The pale green was there. The big rosettes were there from a man-made, um, um, I don't know what it was from now. I think it was the cushion cover. And I'd cut the piece out because I just loved the colours. And when this came along, ribbon embroidery, placed it down and then I embellished it to blend it all into my background. So yeah, that has just opened up a whole whole new world for me. Quilting, back in the day we were all doing quilting, so Susanna had us do the old, um, what do we call it now? So I can't even remember what it was meant to be. Um, log house, was that it? Log cabin. <laughs> Goodness me. Log, see, I'm not even learning technical things still. Log cabin, but put the Mandy Patuli twist on it, who is using reclaimed textiles and threads and old quilts. And if you don't have access to that, you can create the old feel by the way you pick your colours and you hand stitch these pieces together, add in additional elements and then the big one, thread painting, which is what we're all doing. It's the biggest thing I think on YouTube at the moment, stitching threads over a image that a designer has done on some fabric and playing with the layering of walls and things like that, which is just led to, you know, my seasons project. So camphor quilt a beautiful piece I picked up love the industry the camphor quilt is the story connected to it through India and then added some vintage pieces to it um, so really happy with that one and then crazy quilting gosh who would have thought crazy patchwork who would have thought I would have done that I've admired it but once again Susanna's built up elements as we've gone through the project. So here comes my ribbon embroidery again. And it is just to go from sneak around a patch over here to have a go, which then led me to the Jennifer Colston class, which just next level understanding uh, the looseness that makes great ribbon embroidery. I guess 
growing up looking at this style and now this is probably more where I fit in the industry of ribbon embroidery so that will be that was a major learning then getting back to what you do with crazy patchwork you focus on a, an area and build build it up so that's classic classic lace beads stitches to build it up then the little random patch that's the slow stitch world it's like dragging all worlds I don't know finally we've got to a stage in needlework where we can all play in some area of needlework bringing in old techniques I, th I think it's great great idea so I do have room in my little journal for more activities but officially the project has finished with Susanna who who knows she might decide to put together in the future hint hint some more prompts so I don't think I'll rush to fill my journal with other things I'm just going to leave it sit for a little bit and then maybe revisit it in the future so that's that's my thought on it or I might see I might literally see a project idea and go oh I know where that would fit nicely that'll work in with this this fabric journal so I'm just checking now how big of a space I can go like I need to stay okay I've got these all pre-torn so I really really need to stay within the boundaries of that like how hard is that for me so needle turn applique here we go another one of my not so favorite activities so I guess needle turning that's what Susanna's needle turning I don't think I'm going to do the pin cushion but I want to stay within the theme of our sewing so before I lay down my background fabrics which I've got here ready to go what I might do is I've pulled out my project bag that I have a block of the month in here which I haven't done many blocks because YouTube came along and I just haven't had time to stitch general stitching but what I have is so much work Libby Robinson 2020 released a quilt called vintage treasures and in here is a block per month of things to complete and I have done two I picked the blue version of it I do a lot of red work but I thought I'll go the blue because it's something a little bit different and I have completed only two and I haven't even followed the rules you know me see the sewing machine I use that back here in vintage collectibles prompt that Susanna had so there's the sewing machine that little piece was from the pattern and then I added some little um, sewing embellishments so it sort of fits with this whole theme there's that piece there thoroughly enjoyed stitching that that felt very Jessie Chorley too the way she does her stitching so I've sort of have covered off on the scissors and some thread I haven't done a pin cushion that might still happen but as you can see from this where's the original pattern for this one I have not followed the brief there's the other one I have gone on my own tangent that's it there that one I haven't done that up here where I should have because I got into the doilies I've added this like it's just got out of hand monogram look at this couched monogram so the heart that was hanging here I haven't done it <laughs> there's the heart it just went it just goes yeah you know me by now I've corinned it so 
I want to have a look through this pattern and see if there's some little elements that I can take into Susanna's project because it sort of all fits. So that's one of the panels. Gosh, will I ever get it done? And I've only done two and look at all the, the bits left. Like look at all that beautiful fabric. So I've sort of got the confidence now that I can actually really play with this project and I'm not going to be short of fabric. I got it from the girls out at Toowoomba. Um, oh, Quilters Angel, Angel Quilters. Have I got their card handy? Oh, no, no. It'll be, I'll, I'll track it down. It'll be in the description. Don't know if they sell this anymore anyway, but they do do um, packs. See, that's just some bits and pieces that I put aside that I've already used. And I thought I'd better keep them all together. Don't look in there, girl, because you'll see something you'll want to take out that you've allocated to the project. Look at that. I think it needs to come out. Does it come out? Let's, let's steal it. I shouldn't. Oh, there's some tatting. Oh, I want some tatting to go into my into my Roxy project. Oh, gee, I'm gonna steal it. I shouldn't have opened this bag, seriously. See how I've jiggered up that. Okay. We're going in. I'm gonna steal it. That's gotta go somewhere. That, all right, zip it up. That's it. Do not go in there. Otherwise, there'll be nothing for the project that cohesively, you know, connects it all. So I've got this doily on the bottom here, which I haven't cut. It will drift on to the next panel. So you can see how whatever the next panel is that is underneath this, I will need to adjust the design because I've gone off on a tangent. Very much so. Look at that. There's tea time. Because Susanna's got a teacup. But it's supposed to be needle turn applique. And the best I would get is I embroider the little message and needle turn applique the patch on. So I don't think that's really neat in the brief. So we'll put that one away. We'll put this away. Let's have a look through these. Ah, that's the gate that I used in the garden, um, down the garden path. You'll remember it in the bottom of that piece. Um, it's handy, I'll show you that. So I guess if you're considering buying a block of the month, yes, they are expensive, but if you can utilize, that's the gate. If you can take images from one project and use it in other projects, it is so worth the value of that pattern. And Libby Richardson, not Robinson, Richardson, she's got a very antique vintage style. So if you were to look up her as a designer, you might find shops near you that have invested in buying that particular pattern and then the shop has put in their fabrics. You might be able to buy the pattern by itself um, have a good look at her because if you're right into vintage sewing techniques, this is a, a lovely way of getting value for money. This is what I'm thinking of trying to see. Okay, so there's, there's that one. What happened to my plastic bag? That's missing in action. What else have we got here? Fashion. No, it doesn't suit. We've got to stay baking. No. Ah, I used that image there on um, my down the garden path as well. A mannequin. That could work. A sewing room mannequin. Just thinking, does it inspire me? I don't mind that idea. Let's put that to one side. A clock and a C. Gee, funny I'd realised that when I was doing 
gosh, I had a monogram C and didn't even realize. What else have we got? Oh, this is telephone, is vintage, jam jar. Oh, look at the jam jars. Aren't they just gorgeous? Some great little images in this pack. That's the background fabric. The bee and the beehive. So that's not really sewing. Treasures. Hmm. Did I use the word treasures? Oh, I did vintage sewing. That's from Susanna's. Okay. No. All right. What does the C look like? I'm thinking I can needle turn the bodice on that. It will be tricky because there's a lot of curves and I really should avoid too many curves, but it's doable. The other option I've got is I go looking for, and my first thought when I was thinking about it was I go find a florally sort of needle turn. Do you know those quilts that have beautiful big floral treatments that are all needle turned? I just love them, but I don't know if I have a pattern that I could utilize there's the C I don't really need another monogram for the treasury but do I put one in this it's not needle turn applique is it I'm getting a bit sidetracked here Hmm, let's just keep, oh, look at the, look at those. Where are they? Perfumes. Where, where, where are they? Oh, sorry. Oh, goodness me. I mean this one. They're not needle turn applique. Stay focused. Okay. I'm not achieving much here, am I? But I guess you're seeing... I guess another way of, that's interesting, copyright to Libby. There, look, there's the details. Take a screenshot, guys. That's must be where Libby is based. Is it Libby? I don't know. But have a little look into that. I might do that too. I'll get on my, put the right pattern in the right bag. I will get on to YouTube and investigate that further, guys. Maybe if I put that back in like that. So, have we achieved anything here? Not really. Let's have a look at that mannequin. Can we get the mannequin pattern and needle turn it? Because that would be something different. And it is sewing. Susanna will be shaking her head. She's going, that girl, she's off on a tangent. Let's have a look at the pattern for the needle turn. I'm not convinced yet. We can put that one away. You could certainly needle turn the hat, but it doesn't really suit Susanna's. Ooh, look at that too big for my work or is it a mannequin yeah hello there's my pieces reverse applique yep so we can needle turn that okay so that's the I'm just looking at my so that piece and that piece are those two. So that would be the bodice of the mannequin. Then there's the pretty little piece with the lace on the bottom and then stitch the corset on. This is what we're going to do. Vintage sewing techniques, needle turn applique. So Susanna's video will feature the pin cushion building up that block. And I'm going to do 
this. So, having said that, I need to get my background ready. So let's just put this to one side as our reference. We know our sizing. So we can lay down our background knowing that this is going to be here. So we need a neutral base. What have we got in our box of tricks? Let's bring the fabric over and really get into it. Got plenty of scraps. We could use that as a neutral. Oh, I've never got into this piece. Love it in itself. I'm just, I can see this all stitch. I wonder if this would work with autumn. Oh goodness, she's off on a tangent. I'm going to pull that out. I've still got that little element. I don't think that's going to get a home. I might put that back with this quilt. And that then might end up on that quilt. So, what have we got? Oh, okay, here we go. Look, we've got Timothy Holtz fabric. Gee, make it easy. We could just lay down this. Let's get the text. What's the text say? It's train lines and transport. Not really fabric orientated, is it? Maybe just a little bit of it. I'm thinking... I get this background down in its entirety and what I might do is camphor stitch it, running stitch it, boro stitch, just lines and lines and lines. That'll get me a neutral background and then I can build my mannequin from there. That's what we're going to do. And if I want to make it interesting, I could, yes, let's do, I've just had an idea. Okay, mannequin can go away. I think we've got the general feel. Actually, I need to photocopy that and then pack that away so that things don't get mixed up and lost. So that'll be the first job. I'm going to lay this fabric down a little bit bigger than my background. And then I'm going to put in some patches of fabric just to sort of make it feel because I've got scraps left here and I want to use them. So I'm just going to lay down bits and pieces random and it will help push the train information back into the background. I can do a bit of that to the side because the mannequin will come through here. So all I'm going to do is just put them wherever. I'm not going to overthink it. <clears throat> doesn't really match. I did like that spot, so that's in. In the process, I'm going to have a tidy up because we are now at the end of the project. And I want to put the box of goodies to one side. So, you know, pack it down and put it away. So that can be all put back might just come up a little bit so you can see what I'm up to here. So I'm going to put things away in the cupboard. They need to hang around because they are um, very much part of it and might peek out again. Doesn't work whatsoever. This potentially could be part of her body, but I don't know yet. Might be too big of a print. 
this little guy doesn't fit. It just needs to go into my scraps, so that's gone. Got a little bit of camphor quilt. No, into the scraps. That might pop up again. Could be useful. That could be useful, but I can't imagine I'd actually use that, to be honest, because the stripes are too big. But I'll leave it there for now. This is just random stuff that I thought I might use. So they need to go back into the not used random bucket. I've got more bits here. That could work. Where's my boundary? See already, this is what happens. I go stitching and I'm off, off the page. Could pop a little bit of blue because that comes from the other projects. So let's put a little bit of blue. So I'm just going to running stitch over it and all of this will become part of the background as we lead into the, you know, the mannequin. Probably won't hurt to have a little pack of fabric that stays with that journal too, I'm thinking. Because if I don't come back to, see that's unusual. If I don't come back to this piece for, you know, 12 months or so, at least I'll have, I just upset the apple cart, that piece there. I don't. At least I'll have some bits and pieces. So I might just put together at the end of this a little pack that stays in the back because there's pockets. Pockets in that um, journal cover that could have some of these bits. There's some lace that might work for the lace trim around the bottom there because that's been used through the project, so we'll keep that. A little bit more blue. I'm thinking we're going to do a blue bodice. This fabric I got as a gift when I was in Paris from the lady that was overseeing our whole tour, the, the lovely lady that Forage used to take us on our journey. That just never got utilised, so that's going to go away. Mm. Never got used. I'm just going to add that to the stash. I guess too, if I go somewhere for a weekend and I just want to grab some um, something to do, this journal could go. And at least if I've got a little pack of goodies there that sort of semi-coordinate, I'm going down a blue line, a blue vibe here. It's in the journal ready to go. I oh, don't like that. Put that away. Bit of text. Bit of blue. more of that that appeared earlier in our stitching maybe we lay that in there where's the boundary girl she's getting out of hand now Where's the boundary? Not thinking too much about the mannequin yet. The mannequin is actually embroidered down the bottom here so that bit of embroidery will compete with that so I'm going to take that away 
And if I did put something there, it needs to be more of a neutral piece of fabric. That's in the spine of the journal, so it'd be good for that to pop up somewhere. Yes, this is interesting. So I wonder, can we lay that down? Oh, it's just, I could adjust the bottom. Let's lay this down and that's what we stitch this part. See this, this little bit of embroidery. And what I might do is just adjust the bottom of the design, like bring that down there and there so that it definitely fits. There we go. So I need this laid in here somewhere. Where's our boundary? I need it over here. Where's the bottom? What I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to photocopy this. Then I can cut this roughly out and really play with it. So I'm just, what are we at? Half an hour in. Okay, I'll be back in a second, guys. Okay, I'm back. So I've got a copy of it. So what I'm going to do is put this away before it becomes mixed up in amongst it. All right. I'll keep it close because I might want to grab it and have a little look. Now, the bodice pattern and the mannequin pattern, we will keep handy. That'll be in another video another day, but we will probably need to consider their placement. This really fits, doesn't it? Because I'm doing the mannequin as part of my treasures project. Okay, rubbish. Now, I might just cut this out a little bit more detail. Because I want to make sure that scrap works. I really want to use it and I'm going to use it as my background to embroider on. <clears throat> I could probably go looking for a bigger scrap, but so, all right, I think we need some boundaries, girl. Let's just cut that too. Was a bit crooked but it's all good so that can go away now let's cut this out i can use it then to trace around because this fabric here this old piece of linen is really thick and there is no way i will see this image underneath it to trace it so I will cut around it, use that as my outline, and then guess the rest. It's not too hard. It's not like it's an animal where you probably need to try and use the designer's assistance to get the reality of an actual animal. This is just a pretty gentle looking Okay, gee, it'll come so close. The fact that it doesn't quite fit is not a bad thing, to be honest. Where's the top? So I can see my base there. I could come slightly off center that'd make it look more interesting and there's 
just the top. So I need to bring it down just a little bit. And I'm going to do it off center. Yeah, I like that. Pins. Where are my pins? Of course, my pin cushion is still in the other room. Gee, I'm prepared, aren't I? I like the position of all of this. So when I do my running stitch to secure all of this down, I will know that it is right where I need it to be. I need to trim that because the boundary is just there. So that little piece can come out. But that piece is staying. What I might do, do I have a pen here? I'm going to double check, yep. Yeah. I'm going to sketch this in. So then it's there. I don't need to adjust the base because now, because I've taken it off the center of that piece, which I think is making it a little bit more interesting. Look, there's the join there of the two big pieces of fabric way back when the manufacturer had a very small loom and was stitching fabric together. That's how you tell if it's a really old piece of um, linen. They would have to stitch them together because their looms weren't very big. But then as manufacturing really got going and they thought, well, if we made a bigger loom, we don't have to spend time and effort, you know, stitching pieces of fabric together so there's the base sketched in so let's just have a little play with the missing lines and get those in bit of a curve there then there's some I'm thinking along the lines of a chocolate thread to make it sort of feel a little bit more timberish, old world feel. Then it comes up and there's a bit of a, a rounded shape here. Straight line, another straight line, some little lazy daisy stitches a couple more up there and they've got a bit of an angle about them so that makes that feel it's a bit bodgy my drawing here but you get the general gist they're a lot finer than what i can actually draw so there is the base from there is our needle turn which is all of this so I'm going to chop off that. It's not needed and that's a morsel for another day. Now I had something happening up here, didn't I? I wanted this spot to appear. Just as a bit of feature, where's the top of my fabric? I'm already off the top. And I wanted to disguise a little bit that this is train background so I can see the word arrival and departure. So let's just do a bit of collaging. That piece was down here, but sort of competes with it a little bit. So I might just pop it in there. No, I don't like it. I had this other blue. I like that blue because it sort of has been throughout the book. So I don't mind the idea that that's included, to be honest. So 
So maybe I'll just do a bit of a random cluster there. Those pieces aren't needed. Put them away. I don't think that's going to work. That can go there. What else have we got? <clears throat> like on cue, the moment I turn the camera on. So I've got some text. Maybe that's got potential to be stitched in. A bit of script. Rough it up a little bit. Boundaries. Where's my boundaries? That works. I sort of want to stay away from here because that's the focal point of she, the mannequin. So I just want to... Do we want some camper quilt? Oh, look. This is where I explored what was in the camper quilt. How beautiful. Maybe I pick some of these bits. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, bandit. There's a courier in the street. I swear they hear the van door on the courier. Let's just put some little bits of camphor quilt around. That's new for me. Oh, look at that. It's so thin. You have to find you a home, my little baby. There we go. You can sit there. And this little piece here, I think, would work too. It's got a little, little line in it. Let's just snip you off. Threads. Let's just get you there. What else is here? Look at that. It's just disintegrated. Can we get that to lay in there? Oh, I was, <laughs> I've just had a thought. There was a piece of fabric on my desk a month or so ago. And when I split it, from it was French when I split it look at that when I split it apart there was lint caught in it it must have been like a pocket on an outfit or something so there was just that lint caught within the layers of the fabric and I remember thinking at the time are we getting to the point where we're going to be stitching down lint and quite a few of you commented going oh my goodness I can't believe we're we're looking at fabrics to that detail now. It's just gorgeous. And um, yeah, so here I am now stitching down, completely broken down bits of fabric. <laughs> Goodness me. Just want to break up that line a little bit. Probably overthinking it now. But it's all, you know, layers and texture and it'll make the piece interesting, I think. I think we've got it. I don't want that green. That's a bit of a nothing colour, but we'll take it anyway. And we'll just, there we go. We'll use it to soften an edge. So I'm going to leave that little piece with all of that because that just is got a little flower. Doesn't really suit. Leave it with that. This can go away. That can go away. That can go away. Put that in my... I have this neutrals bucket on my desk where I just put neutral tones. So whenever I'm doing a project and I know that I'll be definitely laying down something neutral. I can just grab it. I think that's it, guys. We have got... Oh, I still have this lace. Ah. Now, this lace was gifted to me. I always felt like it suited this, but I don't know. I can't get that into there. Always have a bit of string because you never know. All right, should I add that? That would be pretty. 
beads in. I won't, that tatting, I know what I want to do with that. There's another little morsel. I'll put that in my neutrals. Okay. I think I can put this away. Oh, here's another morsel. Bit of rose fabric. Another morsel. Okay, I think I think we have enough. So I won't need this at the moment. Won't need that. Won't need that. So that will all go together. Back into the box. And I need to pin down all of this. Because as I said, I'm just going to running stitch over the whole thing to make one big piece of fabric. But that fabric's going to have all these little textual, textual, is that a word? Texture in the background. And then we'll come back and do our, I can see the word track there. I don't think it'll be noticeable because it'll be stitched. If I find that I'm looking at it, I might find another piece of fabric just to... This so looks like it's the scrap room of a lady's, like a seamstress. You know, the floor would have all bits of fabric. Well, just look at my floor. The floor would have all sorts of bits of fabric lying on it from the cutting room. That's the word I want to use. The cutting room. So I've picked them all up. And I'm stitching them down to create an interesting background. Now I'll probably go to my all-time favourite cotton, which is just crochet cotton number eight, I think it is, in cream and just run it through. Okay. Which I don't seem to have one sitting near me. There's always one, surely. I know I am getting a bit low on it. I might just get up to my supplies. I just spotted another one. Hang on one moment. I've got the one I buy all the time from Spotlight, but I pick them up randomly around the place when they're three quarters used and I'm just wondering this is an unusual color DMC number eight six four four it's a bit of a muted I think this came in a bundle that I got from Melanie purveyor of reclaimed textiles where she does groups of threads and this I believe so this is a bit of a Melanie thing she'll put a little bit of tape on it to hold it yeah I like the grunginess of that thread I would normally go to this guy number eight a crew easily available everywhere I buy it by the dozen the other thing I could do haven't used that for ages that's a vintage cotton that I picked up way back in the beginning of all of this two years ago and I was using it regularly but I've gone away from it a little bit I'm going to use this it's got a bit of a silvery tone so something different alrighty that can go away okay I think we're there I might do some invisible stitching first and of course I don't have my cotton, no I won't be. So I'm going to be brave and just go for it. So I need a needle. So these scraps will go into the pocket. How will I do that? Oh, I don't know. Hang on. I have some calico here. Okay, gone off on a tangent again. need all of that. Let's just get rid of some of the bulk. Put that back in the cupboard. What 
I'm doing is I'm creating, being that we're at the end of the project technically, I'm going to create a bundle of goodies that can be used if I pick up this book again. Let's arrange it a little better. So we're on a tangent now. Sorry, guys. We've, you know what I'm going to do with that. I'm just going to stitch it. I've got my cotton. Where's my project? That's the cotton. That's the project. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm just going to group these into scraps. And I'm going to work out a way of storing it in the journal so then I can get rid of the project box and I will have inspiration waiting for me. Bear with me. So if you were giving a project to someone and you wanted to kickstart them on their journey, you would do something like this. You would just arrange clusters of inspiration. And that's what all these little scrappy bits are all about. It's just a tidy up at the end of a project, but presenting my leftover bits somewhat decoratively is a big word and logically. So I'm just fiddling around. I guess um, I think back to journal making when we were doing fabric flips, Gal Gastonali. Gastonali was a big one for fabric flips in her journal and they can be applied to this I'm trying to make it so that I would pick up the page or the cluster and I would see straight away some inspiration that potentially might send me down a rabbit hole. So that's all I'm really doing here is decoratively tidying up my bits and pieces. So slowly getting it down to some clusters. Let's get that round some beige pieces plus my camper quilt which doesn't really go in there so I might do that that, that, and then that. Okay, then I got my little flower, my camphor quilt. Okay, and some lace that will one day find its way into that. There we go, we've got some little bits. So let's just move everything back. Grab our journal and some lace. So you've got a couple options. You could pin them in, but not a good long-term thing because pins tend to rust. Being that 
my project will be done sooner rather than later and the journal will be full sooner rather than later I can look at the pin option I'm just going to put that away in my scraps because I think I'd be wanting to use it sooner rather than later so I tend to keep my tape measure bits on that one corner and I'm going to put that string back I can always get it if I need it so I have pockets here so what I'm thinking is this bigger one slides into the pocket for a rainy day then let's go to the back pocket and we have the pieces ready for decorating. So what I'm going to do, I think, is pin... Where are my little itty bitty pins? Yeah, here. These are applique pins. And so that I'm not losing general pins, I'm going to pin that onto there. Probably don't need all that lace. And I will use it in this project. So I'm going to be taking that back. And I'm going to just pin that there. And then that can slide back into there. Now, being that my next piece will go here, and this is the start, I guess, the next project, I'm just going to pin, if I can get it to go through the whole lot, that onto there, that onto there. So as you can see, if I was to grab this journal and go away for a little bit, on a little holiday or whatever, I would have enough here, heaps here, to do something. And that way, if, as this project goes back onto the shelf for a rainy day, and then I'm going to turn this page over and be greeted by some more little morsels of inspiration. It's quite thick, that piece of camper quilt. And that's a bent one too, so that's a good one to donate. That will stay the length, oh yeah. Okay, so we have had a very good tidy up. I am a happy girl. And I still have a few bits, actually. What happened there? They got away on me. Maybe they've been uncovered since I've tidied up. Well, they're great morsels. They need to go in here as well. I'm going to use them to hold that down. Lovely. All right, so I've got my fabrics to put away because we're not going to be needing those. I've got future projects still connected to it. So that's storage within the journal itself. I've got my next page ready to be all stitched down with my thread and then I will come back in the next video and work on the inserting of my mannequin, which will be the needle turn experience. I think that's pretty much it. That's really good. So I can close up my, see it's now getting chunky, like how gorgeous. Look at that. 
and I still got room like look at the pages they're not even sitting square so that final signature that will be okay um, I'm not going to tie that not yet it's just wear and tear so I might just gently pop that in there do the same at the back <coughs> It's like a project within a journal. Well, that's what they're all about, isn't it? They're sewing journals that we can just pick them up and continue on our journey. Done. Okay, guys. Thank you for hanging out with me. I have tidied up. I have finished a project. I'm going to get rid of the box too. I'm really feeling like I'm... Moving on. Box is empty. Project is nearly complete. I can now file this in my files so that if I ever want to refer to the actual notes, well, to be honest, you know what I can do with this? Is I can, that sticky tape's on reverse because... I had it on the inside of the lid. I can put a paper clip in that. Here we go. Here we go. This is like a time capsule. And then, how's my pocket look? Good sticky tape there. Vintage sewing, that'll fit better. Let's put the paper clip there. So that's good because the notes from the project and the prompts are going to end up in my journal. So if you wanted to be really, you know, fancy, you could print that out on some um, cream colored paper make that vintagey so that it's sort of blended with your whole project to be another little thing you could do so there we go the project is within the journal it has found its home and I still have pages for another four so if I see anything or I'm inspired by something I can um, I can make it and add it because I have room. I'm going to attach that to there. It's becoming a real journal now. So that's there, ready to go. Okay, guys, thank you for hanging with me. I feel like I've done some housework. Can we class that as housework for the day? I think so, why not? Why not, I say? All right, guys, look after yourselves and um, I will go away and stitch this down and trim it back to the size we want and then we're ready to start working on our next portion of the piece. Alright guys, look after yourselves and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!